I'm in seventh grade. This is my fifth year. I started in third and really like it. I have dyslexia. I could barely read before and I started reading within two months. They help you understand how maybe things can be solved and that anything is possible. I feel like our school is definitely has problem solving in very creative ways and stuff, so it's easier for me to like actually learn if I see how stuff works rather than just hearing people talk about it. In my old school, they would just think that I like just was slow and they didn't really help me with that. So I think it's pretty awesome that your disabilities can help you do something that a regular learner couldn't. So it was 40 years ago Chris and I attended this school and it was really a turning point for us. We were diagnosed with dyslexia in 1976. It was really a term that was more or less misunderstood. We barely could read, but we were incredibly creative. We loved to draw, we loved to build models. And it was a great bound benchmark. It's very much of an open architecture. It was really focused on the areas that you were interested in and then Chris and I always love to say, taught us how to teach ourselves. It's a really powerful thing, the way they treat education, that it's really a hands-on approach to learning. So the processes we use to make this, it's a CNC router for the plywood ceiling, it's a cut-fold, break-formed metal for the facade. You know, we, we wanted to exhibit processes that can be understood and performed in the space here. And the process is legible in the architecture. It was really exciting to think of the architecture as a tool in the learning space. And so we focused our energy to design and build the geometry that someone could unbuild mentally. And in the ceiling, you can see that the fins detach and that they're all discrete pieces which together build up into one geometry. We try to think through how do we help to break down different tasks and make them manageable and help students recognize patterns in the world. When you read the literature on what it's going to require for students to succeed in the future, technological expertise is important but only to the degree to which students are creative and can communicate well, they can collaborate well, and they can engage in critical analysis. So they're going to have the opportunity to use these tools to grow in their confidence and their ability to move from a question to go through the iterative process, face challenges, overcome them, and that not only works in an innovation space, but that's really what they need to do across different activities that they're going to do in life. I hope that they put us in like partners of two or three because if you make something and it doesn't work, you can just try again. So if your friend and you were thinking of an idea and your friend said, put this here and then put this here, then you could say, no, we do this first, then this. And then your other friend could think of something completely different and it would work like 10 times better of what then you were thinking. You'll be able to actually like test problems out in the makerspace rather than just learning how to solve problems. So yeah. That'll be helpful. And using your creativity in just the innovation space will help you actually use your creativity in different subjects, such as you know language arts, science. Because like normally you just have an idea and you've nowhere to go with it. But now at the innovation space, we can actually build what we're imagining. So it's going to be really, really amazing. I would say the only difference between 40 years ago and today is yes, the technology, but. The idea of working with your hands, creating things, problem solving, but problem solving in, in an environment that doesn't limit you or judge you in terms of what you're capable of doing.